Hey guys, I hope you're doing fantastically. I hope you have a great day, sunny day, whatever you are. It's like so hot in Copenhagen right now. Amazing. The light just shifted because the sun came out. But this is going to be my reading wrap up for May and I actually only read three books in May. Actually, I read five books, but I finished two books so close to last month that I included in the last month because I think it's easier to talk about books like right when you've read them because it's a better review to be honest because then you remember all the aspects better but I'm going to talk, be talking about three books today sometimes I get really stressed out about having to read so many books and I sometimes like push myself a little bit too much maybe to read a lot but honestly like you have to ask yourself has my life been like worse this month because I didn't read and the answer is no so then it's completely fine, honestly. And the first book I read was Peace and Turmoil by Ella Brooks. This is Dark Shores book one. It was super dusty. <laughs> um, so I bought this because I am a subscriber of Elliot Brooks on YouTube and I really like her videos and she does a lot of fantasy and stuff. And so I decided to pick up her book and this is a very well written debut novel like I would recommend it as a fantasy and it's very well done as a debut. You follow many different characters and it's a epic fantasy or like a high fantasy at least and you basically just get to follow like all these different characters who in some way are a part of like politics um, in this world. You basically get to follow like the princess or princesses in the different like countries um, or regions in this world and there are some like lion-ish creatures, they're called fiends and they're really cool because there's also pictures in this book of the fiends and I really enjoyed that because you can see it like so clearly and there's also some like connection between um, dragons and humans and how they communicate and I really enjoyed that. To be honest, like some parts were a little bit slow and I couldn't really connect the characters to the different places and sometimes I forgot which king was in which place and I think there's like two kings and that start with the letter G and I'm like why would you put two kings in like that start with the letter G like I think that's confusing I don't know if that's just me I like the names to be like completely different so I don't mix up the characters and I also think that if you need a character list you have too many characters like the person shouldn't have a problem remembering the characters like I think that takes away from the enjoyment of the book and if it takes away from the enjoyment of the book it's unnecessary and I think some of the characters perspectives were unnecessary because it was nice that we got to follow or like get to be in the eyes of different type characters but then it was like through the eyes of too many characters and some of them was just kind of unnecessary most of it was really slow and I liked it I gave it four stars and I would recommend it as a fantasy and especially to support a self-published author and I think that's really cool um, so I liked it I don't know it was I will definitely continue with the series and I think the ending was quite good but it's a little bit too much politicking and stuff and that's not really my deal I was would also have liked to not follow only the royals in this world but maybe more like lowland uh, type pe people but the character we got to follow most Diedrich he was a really great character and I really enjoyed like following from his perspective so that was really great. Next I read The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon and this is also a hell of a thick book and surprisingly enough like really funny when I started reading this book it's really similar to Peace and Turmoil or Peace and Turmoil is really similar to this one but if you're gonna read one of the two I would recommend this one because you can kind of tell that it's written by a more experienced author but in this world you also get to follow four different perspectives and it is basically about a war that has been going on between two different types of dragons, water dragons and fire dragons and you get to follow this girl and the main character, Ede, she is basically a part of the sisterhood called the Priory of the Orange Tree but she has to take an assignment in the north on an island to protect this queen, they say as long as the queen lives, the dragons are at bay, but there's some mystery things happening. You get to follow like a lion rider and some different people from court and it's really cool. I really like the magic, even though it's like kind of brief, there is some like magical artifacts like going on, um, stuff happening and I really, it's really fun. 
I actually felt like I could connect more with the characters in this one and the romance is just so great. I really love the romance. It was amazing. Um, I also think there were some parts that were kind of slow and the character list in this book is 16 pages, not counting front and back. So honestly, like too many characters, like you don't have to have a character list. But interestingly enough, the other book had a shorter character list and less characters, but I had a harder time remembering those characters than these characters. Like I really didn't look that much at the back, but something I didn't like about this book, and it's actually just a preference, is that the reveal happened too early. Like I like the reveal to be at the end, like how the world is connected and what kind of goes on. I like that to be at the end because it kind of like builds up but once you have the reveal there was kind of like this big battle but then I was like I don't really care what's gonna happen because it's after all kind of young adults so I kind of know that it's gonna be a happy ending so like the battle is just like meh like because I know what's gonna happen so I really liked uh, would have liked it more if the reveal was at the end but it is a standalone and I really enjoyed that and it's also a really great book actually if you are been reading a lot of young adults and you want to get into adult fantasy. I also gave it four stars. And the last book I read, or I should say finished this month because I've been reading this for like two months or something, like two, three months. And I just like, it's a 300 page book. It's like, well, I just read it already. And I finally finished it. And I don't know if I should give it two stars or five stars. Like, do you ever read those books where you just, you don't know what to feel? Um, this is a magical realism book. Uh, it's The Crying Wife by Patrick Ness. It's his only adult book. And it's the second book I read by him. I read more than this by him and I really loved it. So I decided to pick up more stuff and I wanted to try out something that was a little bit more adult. Um, I actually, I think I really liked it. I think I loved it, but I'm not sure. I don't know how many stars I gave it. This is basically about a very ordinary man and you get to follow his perspective as well as his daughter, Amanda's perspective, but basically George, the main character, he wakes up in the middle of the night and there is this injured crane, like the bird, outside in his garden and he helps it survive, basically. He pulls out an arrow from its wing and it flies away. Shortly after, he meets this incredible woman, Kamiko, I don't remember her name, and they basically together uh, create these beautiful art pieces that go viral and then lots of things start happening. It is like kind of slow in the beginning, you get a lot of backstory which is a little bit unnecessary but at the end it's really good and I really like how things come together. It's just like really nice. I really like these type of contemporary books. It kind of reminds me of The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows by Ava Lavender but like an adult and guy version of that. Yes, yeah, so I think I really liked it, even though it took me so long to read. I only read the first 100 pages in two months, and then I read the next in like two days, so. But yes, that's it. Those are all the books that I read in this month. I hope you weren't disappointed because it's only three books, but I promise next time, if it's three books or less, I will probably do a review for each and then skip the monthly wrap-up, because then I can get more in-depth, and then it's kind of unnecessary to do a wrap-up, but... Thank you for joining me. I hope you all have a great day. So since I read so few books, then maybe you guys can comment what books you read down below. That would be really great. I also read like 500 pages of uh, 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami, but like I didn't finish it. So that's that. I'll talk about it next month. I hope you have a brilliant, brilliant day and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!